Let's go ahead and simplify an easy, a medium, and a hard complex fraction. In other words, this is what your teacher teaches you, this is what's on your homework, and this is what shows up on the test, right? Well, it's not always right, but I get your point, and I know the frustration with students, and a lot of times we learn stuff, right? We kind of are able to apply the basis that we learn from here, and then this is the stuff that we see. But you'll be able to see, if you understand the information here, how you can apply it to do something like this, all right? But let's go and start with the basics because maybe this is an introduction video for you and you're like, what do I even do for complex fractions? Or always when I'm trying to learn you know, something new, I always get confused. So let's start with the most basic. All right, a complex fraction, again, is basically just we have fractions in the numerator and in the denominator. And the one thing I always tell my students is we want to get rid of the fractions, get rid of them. So how do we get rid of the fractions? We want to find something that our denominator is going to evenly divide into. So another way of saying that is find the least common denominator or the least common multiple of your denominators. So we're not gonna look at the big fraction. We're gonna look at all these individual fractions. So you can see here, I have an X, a Y, and an X. So I need to find the smallest expression that Y and X both divide into. Well, that expression is just going to be X times Y. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find that least common multiple and you're gonna multiply it by every single expression inside your complex fraction when they are separated by addition or subtraction. Here we have subtraction between these two fractions. So I need to make sure I multiply an XY times each one of these. Now for the sake of time on this video, I'm not gonna rewrite it out because I'm kind of working with a little short space here. So I'll try to talk it out and I want you to kind of follow along. Here I'm gonna multiply XY times two over X. Well, the X's are going to divide out. That's just gonna leave me with a two Y. Over here, xy times negative one, there's actually no denominator here, but sometimes you could write it as like over one, but we don't need to, right? So it's xy times negative one, that's just gonna leave me with a negative xy. Over here, xy times one over y, now again, notice the y is in the denominator, so the y over the y are gonna divide out to one, sometimes students say cancel out, but they're really just dividing to one, and therefore that's just gonna leave me with an x. And then over here, my three y times negative three over x, the x's will divide out, and that's just going to leave me with a negative 3y. Now, technically, that is about as simplified as we could get. You could factor out the y just to make sure there's nothing else that could be factored here. So let's factor out the y, and that's going to leave me with a 2 minus an x, and then all over a x minus 3y. And notice that nothing else is going to simplify here furthermore. So this is going to be our simplified answer. It wasn't really that bad in that case. Now, let's get to the next one. The next one, you can see we have some different denominators. So they're not just individual variables. Now we have some expressions. You can see we have two binomials and we have a trinomial. Now, the one thing I always tell students whenever they see a trinomial, the reason why we spend so much time in algebra one and in algebra two, factoring, 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 is because when you see this, I should expect you just hear like a little bell in your head saying factor, 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 factor. So let's just go and do that. What two numbers multiply to give us four and then add to give us a negative five? That's x minus four, x minus one. Okay, so that's gonna be my new denominator that I'm gonna be focusing on. Now, what I need to do is again, identify what is going to be that least common multiple or least common denominator that my x minus one, x minus four, x minus four times x minus one is all gonna divide into. Well, the nice thing is, typically a lot of times when you have two binomials as your denominator, their product is gonna show up in that third denominator, if that is the case. So always look to factor down a third denominator if you already have two binomials as your denominators. So yeah, just like I did over here, rather than multiplying x times y, I'm gonna multiply everything times x minus four times an x minus one. And again, we have to do that to everything that's separated by addition and subtraction. And over here, we only have one denominator, so I'll just multiply there. All right, so when I multiply this expression times two over x minus ones, the x minus ones will divide out, and that's just gonna leave me with a two times x minus four. Over here, the x minus fours are gonna divide out. That's just gonna leave me with a positive three times x minus one. And then here, my x minus four, x minus one is gonna divide out over here, so that's just gonna leave me over with a six. Now, to make your life a little bit easier, you can keep that six in there, or you could factor it out, and just, you can leave it as multiplying by one six at the end. But let's just go ahead and simplify this. And what I'll do is I'll rewrite this as a one six, and let's see what we're gonna get here. So this will be a two x minus eight, and then this is going to be plus a three x minus three. I can now combine my like terms. So that's gonna be a one sixth times, let's say a five x minus 11. Okay, now that is not written in as a rational fraction, but you can go ahead and rewrite this as a five x minus 11, and I'm having trouble with my writing, over six. 
that is just going to be a similar way. But a lot of times I just like to rewrite that on the front if I only have one number in my denominator, just to help me do my work so I don't have to keep on writing so many times. So that's the medium one. Just a little bit more work, a little bit more simplifying. Students aren't as familiar or as crazy about dealing with trinomials and binomials, but it's not too bad. So you get a basic understanding, right? Divide things out, and then your teacher throws this onto you on the test. What do you do? Well, there's a couple of things that probably in the instruction that we didn't cover in this video, but hopefully your teacher kind of went over with you, and that is just a couple of properties. And one of those properties would be x to the negative first is equal to a one over x to the first power, right? Or let's just use n. Okay, so whenever you have a negative power, you can rewrite that as the reciprocal. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna not use negative powers because we didn't do them in the first two. So I just know that a negative power I can rewrite as a reciprocal. Let's just go ahead and rewrite this problem with our fractions instead of negative powers. Okay, I'm just put it over x, you know, five times one over x is just gonna be five over x. All right, so my numerator looks good. My denominator does not look that good because now not only do I have a fraction in the denominator, but now I have a third fraction in my second denominator. That's not good. I need to get rid of that. So how can I get rid of it without changing up, like messing up everything? Well, remember equivalent fractions, ladies and gentlemen. If I had, you know, let's say a one half and I multiplied that by a three over a three, that is going to be the same thing as a three over a six. Right? And three over six is equivalent, let's actually write it like this. Three over six is equivalent to a one half, right? So one thing I can do to get rid of this denominator is, what if I multiplied by an X on the denominator and the numerator? Well, the X is gonna divide this out just like we did in all these examples, right? And therefore then I'm no longer can have a fraction here. So when I do that, I'll have a four X, make sure you multiply this X times both these terms, x times three is a three x, and x times one over x is just going to be a one. So to save myself a little bit of space, I'm gonna write in, since I did explain it, I'm gonna write in what the new answer would be. And actually I forgot, so let me see, where was even the original problem? So that was four, so now it's gonna be a four x all over a three, that's now gonna be a three x, and then now the x's divide out, so that's gonna be, it was minus a one. Okay, so now we have something that looks fairly similar, just kind of like this, Right, we have some binomials, that was an x squared. Okay, and whew, okay. So now we have a three x minus one, an x and an x squared. Now when we wanna find the least common multiple, we need to make sure that everything can divide into it. So x goes into x squared, but x squared does not divide into x, right? So I know I need to at least have an x squared. And then here I need to have this binomial, which is going to be a three x minus one. And that is going to be the product there, and I need to multiply everything times this, all right? So again, I gotta talk my way through it. I'm kind of limited here with my space. So here, the x squared's are gonna divide out. That's gonna leave me with a five times a three x minus one. Here, x will divide into x squared x times, and then I'll have a x times three x minus one times a x plus one. So it's a minus an x times an x plus one times a three x minus one. And then over here, my three X minus ones are going to divide out. So I'll have a four X times an X squared. Plus here, again, one X will divide out here. So I'll just be left with a six times an X times a three X minus one. Now we just gotta simplify. So let's apply some administrative property. Now here, um, let me actually multiply this out here first. So this will be an X times, let's see what this is going to be. Three X times X is a three X squared. 3x times one is a 3x, x times negative one is a negative x, so that's going to be plus a 2x, and then minus one, all right? And we'll apply the straighter property there with the x's, make sure that's a negative x, be careful with that, a lot of students will make that mistake. And then over here, we'll do the straighter property of a 6x. All right, so let's see what we get here. So this is going to be a 15x minus a five, and then over here, I'll have a negative 3x cubed, and minus a 2x plus one, and then over here, I'll have a four X cubed. And then let's see, a positive uh, 18 X squared minus a six X. All right, cool. Now I can just go ahead and simplify my numerator up here. 15, I thought I got a 17. Did I get a 15? Minus a 15 X, 16 X. Where'd I get a two X? Yeah, I was looking back at that. Oh, that was a two X squared. I did make a mistake. 
and that's an X. Yes, I did check my work. Aha, all right, cool. Cause I was wondering, I'm like, yeah, I thought I had a six, I don't remember having a 13 X. Yeah, that's gonna give me a 16 X. Okay, so now I can rewrite this as a negative three X cubed. These two I can combine, which is giving me a positive 16 X and then minus, oh, sorry, that's not there. What am I doing myself? You gotta go to squareds, right? So let's do minus a two X squared here, plus a 16 X, and then we can do minus a five. And why am I getting a plus six? 18 X squared minus six X. Did I make a mistake on that? Let's see my bottom. Okay, no, I think we are good. But one thing that we can go ahead and look into doing is you could look to go ahead and factor out a negative from the numerator and you could factor out a two X in the denominator. You could also look to be able to factor this, factor these both further down. If that's something your teacher is asking you, you could probably further factor these down. But for the complexity of this problem of just simplifying it from a complex fraction, I'm gonna leave it in here. But yeah, I would definitely, if you want to further go down, you could factor out the negative, factor out a two X, and then see if you could further factor these down as well. But for this problem, I'm gonna call that good.